All righty, everybody. Welcome to my first video and a bonus episode that I am recording um, because, well, I've been on vacation, so I haven't had time to do some editing, but I did want to get something out and also celebrate 20 episodes. So, um, you know, I want to take a second to talk about all the different episodes and the guests that came on and how, um, you know, they came in. Um, I'm not going to go into each one into detail, but just kind of recap, you know, um, all the different, a summary of a little kind of like a cliff notes uh, for each episode. So I'll try to make this quick. Um, I'm going to try to do this in one take unedited. So please bear with me. Um, it's about midnight. I, uh, kids are asleep and, um, you know, here we go. So uh, as you can see here, I have the, um, so if you go to getting into infosec.com, and you go to uh, view older episodes at the bottom, you will see uh, episode one. And episode one is Dan Borges. Dan uh, is a good friend of mine. I met him at a CTF um, at B-Size SF. Um, we, uh, we worked together. It was really cool uh, on the CTF and kind of just stayed in touch since. And uh, he had a really interesting background. He actually got an IT job at a pen testing company. So that was really interesting. Um, and how he, that was able to help him. And also we had talked about how his parents had a big influence and um, uh, even, you know, him playing cat and mouse tricks uh, where they would try to restrict some of his computing time and how he was able to get around that. So that was really cool. Definitely check out episode one. Uh, definitely check out all my episodes uh, because each one has a different take on how they came in. And... Um, you know, it's something that I think everyone could benefit from. The next one is Zero Day, a uh, good friend of mine as well. I met him actually through Dan. And um, he also has uh, an interesting, he started off um, working as the quote unquote, kind of like the uh, the Geek Squad. Um, it's called, it was Circuit City's Fire Dog Service. So it was uh, kind of the help desk, um, similar to what Geek Squad is today. And you got to see a lot of malware from people bringing their uh, laptops and their computers and, and a lot of issues with that. And so um, he got exposed to a lot of different malware, a, lot, a big variety of malware. He says um, that the malware back then is a little, a little more interesting than uh, what he's seen today. But, you know, you could listen to the episode for yourself and, and take, see his take on it. And so uh, he also talked about how, you know, his limitations uh, at the time, you know, when he got into 56K modem, uh, you know, you had to, it was harder to get things to work. So you kind of needed to know how things worked. Um, uh, you need, needed to know more about the inner workings of things to get things to work. Uh, my next guest is Christina Hansen, uh, episode three, and she's on her third career as an InfoSec analyst. And uh, she really has an interesting background on how she got in. Uh, she was one of my former students at a boot camp we did, and um, one of my best students actually. Um, so I had a lot of good students in that class actually. So uh, shout out to my uh, boot camp uh, from that year. Uh, everybody there was really awesome, uh, such great personalities. So uh, I really missed that class. In any case, um, she talks about how she got into information security and, and going to conferences for the first time, and how she got a scholarship with the uh, Sands Women Initiative. Um, the exact name is in, are in the notes, and um, and how she finally got a job um, as a security analyst. So that was really interesting. Um, so definitely check that out. My next guest, episode four, is Matt Toth. Matt Toth is also a good friend of mine from a long time ago. He's a sales engineer, and the sales engineer position is often overlooked. Um, the sales position. Nah, sales engineer positions often overlooked um, as you know something that is meritable, but it actually has a lot of merit. Two of my guests total um, so far have been sales engineers, and um, you know you kind of it, it's you know it takes a certain personality to be a sales engineer, um, but you know you do still have engineer in your name, and you you are required to be technical and. And so he talks about that and, and um, the different situations that he's been in. And, and we go into a little nostalgic lane about um, 
the movie hackers and how he was actually watching it on a plane and and it was really interesting so uh definitely check out that episode it's really uh interesting to see from his perspective my next uh, episode five was my first military uh veteran rob carson a really awesome guy and he talks about his transition from uh military life veteran life into civilian life and uh, one of uh, his awesome phrases is, um, is, is along the lines of, hey, uh, at least, you know, nobody's going to die here, right? Uh, so <laughs> um, I, I butchered that, but, you know, definitely check it out for yourself. Uh, he, was in, he was a former Marine, and uh, he has his own company called Sempersec, and he does uh, like compliance as a service. And and really interesting uh, work, uh, really thorough. So he knows his stuff from a, from a compliance perspective and, and overall um, security management perspective. So check that out. Episode six is Robin Stewart. Robin Stewart uh, used to be a paralegal. And um, she wanted to, she discovered security, the security field, and wanted to get into um, and she became right now she's a, a malware researcher, really good one, excellent malware. She's a excellent personality. Uh, Robin Stewart is awesome. Uh, all my guests are awesome, frankly, and uh, she's also an author. So um, I did release a bonus episode about how she became and she, she got into uh, becoming an author. Um, but yeah, Robin Stewart offers some really good tips on like, uh, mentoring and, and, you know, how she kind of like had to, um, work her way into getting into information security. And sometimes when people are coming, uh, looking for mentorship, what she looks for in a person that is looking to be mentored. So, um, she had some interesting stories from that perspective on people who, um, maybe didn't make good mentees, for example. Um, but you know, when she does find someone that, um, is ready to be mentored, she's all, you know, ready to open the floodgates for that. And, uh, definitely a hint, uh, do not challenge her because, um, she'll take on your challenge. So something to keep in mind. And, um, my next episode, uh, well, that's a bonus. So episode seven is Clay Wells. Clay went from being a sysadmin to a security architect and now a, a security con organizer. So he was one of the organizers and founders of the Whopper Summit. And if you don't know what that is, I would check out the movie War Games and uh, uh, check that out. So um, the Whopper Summit happened in March uh, this year, the first one, and uh, it was a big success. So uh, kudos to him for doing that. And it was fun. Uh, he talked about how he found an attacker in his network and the attacker was on there live and he had to uh, take evasive action to, to cut him out. So that was really cool. Uh, definitely check that out. I think um, definitely a fun episode to check out. And episode eight is my first uh, law enforcement agent. So Elvis Chan was kind enough to come on and share his, uh, his path into security. And he used to work at a, uh, a chip manufacturer and uh, he has an electrical engineering background and then eventually got into the FBI. He found it very enticing. And um, he talks about how, you know, life, what life is like as, as a supervisory agent in the FBI. Um, it's really interesting. Um, talks also about what are the requirements to get in there and uh, the various positions. You know, there are civilian positions um, where you don't have to carry a gun if that's, you know, um, something you want to do. But uh, there's a variety of things. So uh, he is a supervisory special agent uh, in the San Francisco office and um, shares some really interesting stories there. So definitely check that out as well. And my next uh, episode, episode nine, is a virtual version of uh, Kyle Kennedy. So Kyle um, is one of the founders of uh, BrainBabe, and uh, or president, I'm sorry, president of BrainBabe, and um, he wrote an amazing article. And when I read this article, I was blown away. So um, it's it's taken me a while to get him booked as a guest. 
And so with his permission, I uh, had IBM Watson, we were using the voice of quote unquote Allison, uh, read off his article. And so that was kind of cool. Excuse me while I drink some decaf barley coffee. And so, uh, by the way, this cup was made by my son when he was in, I don't know, kindergarten maybe? I don't, I don't remember. Or first grade. So, um, so anyway, um, so this article is uh, a virtual reading uh, by IBM Watson. So definitely check that out, um, the text. And actually the quote unquote code of what I use to um, uh, use the different um, emotions. You can actually set different emotion tags um, is all in the uh, show notes. So uh, yeah, uh, you know, I try to take good show notes um, because for me as a listener, when I, um, I'm on the go and I want to see more details uh, as I'm listening to the episode, I, I really rely on those show notes. So um, that's something I try to rely on. Episode 10, uh, again, also a very um, uh, a good uh, milestone along the podcast was InfoSteff. So Stephanie was uh, kind enough to come on. Um, she made it really easy to book. A lot of my guests have been really uh, cooperative and, and nice coming on, um, make it easy for me to, to, to book. In any case, she used to be a journalism major. And so um, yeah, she talks about how um, she wanted to be in journalism and then kind of started understanding the realities of that and then started looking into IT and then more specifically security, information security. And um, she had a really wonderful um, episode and story. And I was, uh, I kind of, in, in this episode, I kind of opened myself up a little bit more actually with the, um, with her on this. So that was, a, it was a good episode overall and um, uh, kudos to her on, 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 uh, how she's doing today. She's, she's doing uh, some good talks and stuff like that. So definitely check out that episode, episode, Luda, excuse me. Uh, definitely check out that episode. And um, uh, yeah, yeah, it, it's a really interesting story. Uh, my next guest uh, is uh, Yaron Levy. So I used to work with Yaron and um, I, I noticed, um, you know, he's, he's moved up I, and now he's a CISO and security champion. So he's always trying to uh, get security out. And he had an interesting story. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm not trying to get every CISO uh, on the show. Um, I'm trying to get those that are, um, that fit, that fit that, the podcast, right? Um, so, um, but I chose him because he's a, a good friend and we stayed in touch. And I saw what he was doing and I, um, what happened was uh, I put out a call for those who um, had a story where they took a chance on someone and uh, it succeeded. And he responded uh, to that call. So uh, again, if you are someone that are in a hiring, hiring position, took a chance on someone in security, please let me know. I'd love to hear that story. So in any case, uh, he reached out to me. So we, uh, we booked some time and um, it was awesome. He had a great story um, talking, he even talked about some incidents that he had um, that, you know, are public. So, uh, you know, some breaches that he um, had experienced uh, not too far into his job. So uh, that was really interesting. And uh, he's an organizer of uh, B-Sides Kansas City. So that's pretty cool. So check out that episode um, and that's what you'll get out of it. My next episode is Jack Recider, uh, episode 12. And so uh, we know Jack Recider from Darknet Diaries. And uh, as a fan of Darknet Diaries, um, I remember listening to the episodes and um, just being blown away. I had chills uh, going through my body. Um, listening, uh, you know, his sound design is just amazing. And he would go through so many stories that I, you know, um, especially some of the the previous stories, not anyone, I'm not going to say anyone any particular specific, but you know, you could kind of understand how, um, uh, you could relate to how these people are feeling when they find something and like nobody's discovered. It and then you're, you know, you know, what do you do with this information? Do you publicize it? Uh, you know, how do you deal with it? So, um, that was a really interesting. Um, so it was a really good episode in, in that episode we talked about, um, <laughs> 
he had some really interesting stories how he had to go uh, put together a firewall really late at night for a customer. Um, and just how he got into IT, he was uh, you know, uh, responsible for a SOC and he built out a whole SOC. And so when you're, um, when you're part of an MSSP, a managed security service provider, uh, you're exposed to a lot of different clients, a lot of different environments. So a really good um, episode there. And he shared a lot of how he came. So it's kind of Jack's uh, origin story. So go ahead and check that out as well. My next episode is episode 13, uh, Marcus Carey. And uh, Marcus uh, started off in the Navy. He had um, uh, humble, humble beginnings uh, out in the country. And, um, you know, we, we talk about how he just had to, you know, make his own toys and, uh, he built his own, um, Olympic size, uh, Olympic size, uh, jump, uh, thing. So I'm, I'm, I can't, I'm not cheating. I'm not looking at the notes. So, um, doing this from memory, but in any case, um, you know, he enrolled in the Navy and he really had some cool shortcuts that he shared about how you can shortcut um, college using CLEP tests and exams. So uh, definitely check that out. Um, he's always available on Twitter. Um, so that's something that, you know, is, is particular to him. And it was a really awesome um, story about how he had to make do with what was available to him. Um, but, you know, after um, his training in the military, how, you know, um, uh, basically is able to use that in, in the private sector. So um, that was pretty cool. And um, oh, so a bonus episode after that was uh, my book. So my book came out um, sometime in, in January. And so as we all know, um, or if you don't know, um, my book is geared for those looking to get into InfoSec, um, but starting from nowhere. So you're, um, you're looking to understand the field um, trying to see where to go, how, how to go about things. Um, it, it's supposed to go hand in hand with, with the podcast. So uh, it's not, you know, uh, super technical where you uh, will teach you, you know, how to code. Um, but I do, you know, lay out, you know, some things about like, you know, getting a lab, um, different positions that are out there, um, more about like the culture and like kind of ethics and how important it is in, in your career. So definitely check it out. Um, it's always uh, updated. Uh, I plan to add a couple more sections, but um, don't take my word for it. You know, go ahead and check out the preview on Amazon, and um, you know, see if you if it's a fit for you. Uh, my next guest is uh, Nipun. So episode fourteen, Nipun Gupta, and so he was um, he is well, yeah, he was a security consultant uh, for many years. Um, in uh, pen testing companies and also uh, some of the big fours. And um, he's had a lot of, you know, as a consultant, you, ha you have a lot of experience with uh, many different environments. So um, he kind of talks about uh, that, but also talks about um, the immigrant experience as well. Um, so, you know, um, being an H1B, uh, dealing with that and, um, you know, some, some, some things of that. But, um, I mean, in fact, he was discouraged to hop into the field um, early on uh, because people said, oh, you have to be, uh, you know, the only thing in cybersecurity are, are military tech jobs. So uh, that was quite interesting. But in any case, um, definitely check that out. Um, he's now, uh, you know, a security innovator at a, um, a banking institution and um, offers a lot of good uh, advice in there. So episode 15 is Adrian Kaler. So I, I found Adrian uh, from Sam Bone's class. Uh, if you don't know about Sam Bone, uh, go to sambone.info. Uh, Just Google Sam Bone, B-O-W-N-E. Uh, the note, the uh, link is in there. And he gave a talk about getting into InfoSec. Um, the video is available online as well. He's really into labs. So he's also another sales engineer. Um, and uh, we had an awesome conversation about, you know, what it takes to be a sales engineer. And we also kind of got really deep into about building your own lab, you know. So one of the big things is about building your own lab 
and getting in there. And, um, you know, he offered some details on, on what he does to build a lab and some hacks. Uh, even one hack about how he uses a, a particular Ikea chair and it's just made like 19 inches, just enough so that it can um, fit, you know, a rack mounted uh, device, right? Rack mounted switch or server. So check that out. Um, links are in the show notes as well. Episode 16 is InfoSec Sherpa. So um, she, uh, um, uh, InfoSec Sherpa, uh, Tracy, sorry, Tracy Mayleaf, um, started off uh, as a travel agent, uh, then a law librarian, and then became a security analyst. And what's amazing is each one of those experiences built upon another. For all my guests, um, that's really a common theme is that uh, each experience built upon the other. So that was really cool. And, um, you know, as a law librarian, I mean, as a librarian, you have to get a master's in library science. And as a law librarian, she um, is really good at OSINT. And OSINT is a, a major part of security um, uh, in, in many, many parts of the security field, uh, but especially in like pen testing. So uh, open source uh, intelligence uh, is where you, you know, you find stuff about a, a quote unquote target um, using what's available to you without actually, you know, touching the target. And um, she has a really interesting story, really um, uh, fun, fun stories. So it was a pleasure to talk with, with her as well. And so um, check out that, that episode and see how she came um, to be. Um, a security analyst from a law librarian and infosec john so another awesome guest episode 17 uh, infosec john has a uh, john has a website and uh, he has a website where he, he has articles and details on on getting into infosec uh, it started off on where uh, he was just gonna kind of uh, document and journal his path into infosec but then it turned into um, a website uh, dedicated to helping those get into infosec, kind of laying out uh, different, uh, like one article where he laid out different positions and kind of related it to a band. So really good uh, metaphors there. So uh, that was a really fun interview as well. He also had a Navy background. Um, I, I didn't pick uh, military folks on purpose. It just ended up that way. Um, you know, uh, that's just, you know, how it happened. Uh, but in any case, um, uh, you know, he has a, he talks about his story and, and military and, and how um, being an engineer, being placed in some of those positions in engineering helped change his thinking as an engineer, right? And uh, you need to have this thinking, uh, this mindset um, to be successful in the information security field. So uh, oftentimes um, employers are looking for that mindset, not necessarily knowledge. I mean, you know, everybody's different. The knowledge is important, uh, but sometimes the mindset is harder to change or augment than, than, than the knowledge. Uh, in any case, um, we talked about that uh, and how he had a uh, kind of directionless youth. So um, really cool. Uh, he's a, he's a, a good friend now. So um, it's really good to um, check out that episode. And then he also had, um, bonus episodes where he talked about how he almost got crushed in a, uh, a Navy uh, engine. <laughs> so uh, really funny. So definitely uh, check out that bonus episode for some uh, entertainment. My next episode is Masha Sadova. So um, her grandmother was the first graduating class. I only found this out after we, you know, we were recording. Uh, is among the first graduating class um, uh, of computer science in Russia and uh, or the Soviet Union at the time. And so um, quite interesting. So she comes from a long history of uh, computer scientists. Um, you know, her grandmother taught her father computer science and then her father taught her computer science. And so she has a whole family of computer scientists, uh, which is really cool. And it was really amazing how um, she had her liberal arts background and only until later did she realize that that was an asset to, to um, information security. And we talk about behavior sci behavioral sciences, psychology, 
a really fun episode um, because um, those are really um, some uh, hobbies of mine. Um, uh, so I really uh, enjoyed, and she had a ton of book references, um, all, of, all of them in the show notes. So uh, tons of books came out of that episode. Um, you know what I mean? So um, definitely check out the links there. And so if you want to learn about security awareness and how um, behavioral science is important in psychology, uh, check out that episode as well. Again, check out all my episodes because um, each one has a different take on getting into InfoSec. So my next one is uh, Jared Fulkin. So uh, episode 19. And uh, Jared is a really, really talented individual. Um, I'm in touch, in touch with him uh, often. And uh, he was a manager uh, at 18. And so the way he started was um, his dad worked in a computer shop and he'd go and help uh, with the computers and see what he could do at a young age. So he got exposed to it early, uh, knowing how to build computers and, and things like that. And, um, you know, he had just a, a varied background. Um, uh, and each job led to an, an something else. And uh, even as an 18-year-old, um, he was given a uh, supervisor position early on, and he was able to solve problems early on. You know, talked about how um, there was there were problems that he would help solve that would m relieve um, things for the next shifts coming on in the morning. He also got really personal. Um, you know, we talked about some personal events in his life that were really uh, pivotal, and I guess in how he thinks um, today, right? that really kind of ground him. Um, so uh, that was a really personal episode. I was, I was uh, really happy to record that with him. Um, and, uh, you know, maybe have some tissues uh, handy uh, if, if that's, uh, you know, if, if that's uh, just to, you know, just to kind of have an FYI. So uh, in any case, um, he's also, he also started a, a nonprofit called OPSEC EDU. And a nonprofit is geared because he works in, in education. And so the nonprofit is geared in towards helping identify and uh, help secure um, uh, education apps because education apps are kind of general um, uh, behind the times as far as security is concerned. So uh, there's a lot of work to be done there. Uh, definitely a lot of emotional intelligence um, uh, with, with him and um, you know, definitely check out that episode, a uh, very rich episode. So episode 20, uh, my latest episode uh, is Laron Gray. And uh, I found Laron uh, through the Twitterverse. And um, he's also, he also has the Navy background. Uh, but I found Laron because he's also a nerdcore rapper. And so um, I heard his, uh, his song, Domains, and or domain and um it was just awesome uh i i love listening to it and uh he um he also you know started in navy learned uh he was e6 which means um that he had some you know some sort of managerial position and he's now a pen te a pen tester uh he's also a sans mentor and so um definitely check out that episode he also is really into uh automation and so uh, he had some good stories about like how he even automates uh, downloading tracks, right? Um, how it's important. And I think that's important because, um, you know, a lot of times we say learn coding and, and things like that. But in reality, unless you have something to solve, a uh, problem to solve using coding, it's hard to keep those coding um, skills sharp. And so um, it, it was a good way to see how a practical way of, kind of making something manual, um, automated using um, coding. So, um, and then he also, um, uh, we talked a little about uh, his new song uh, that's, um, that's going to come out about a lot of tabs. So I also released a bonus episode on that. Um, so check that out. Definitely check that out. So as you can see, uh, we have 20 episodes. I'm really happy. Um, you know, of, of all my guests. Um, thank you to all my guests for coming on and spending the time. Um, hopefully we can get these episodes uh, transcripted. Um, you know, it's not, 
it's not cheap. So I'll have to figure out um, how to do that. But in any case, um, you know, from Dan, Zero Day, uh, Christina, Matt, Rob, Robin Stewart, uh, Clay, Elvis, uh, Kyle, Steph, Yaron, Jack, Marcus, Nipun, Adrian, uh, Tracy, John, Masha, Jared, Laron, uh, Laron. So, um, Laron, what? It's, sorry, man, it's late. It's it's uh, twelve thirty. So it took longer than I thought, um, but I figured it'd be a nice um, kind of cliff notes to um, to all my episodes, and um, that's about it. Thank you, guys. Um, uh, have have a have a wonderful evening. <laughs>